Now we are finally coming to the year end of 2023 and these are five things that you should consider before the year ends because after the year end, it may be too late for you and these are mainly finance and money things. So let's start with the first one which is you should consider topping up your CTF and how much topping up CTF are we talking about? Uh, because we are talking about $8,000 of tax relief to yourself top up to your own CPF accounts and $8,000 to your loved ones which is your parents CPF and that's another $8,000 so if you want to enjoy the $8,000 of tax relief you should do it right now by 31st December 2023 and if you ask me which CPF accounts to top up whether it's your special account or MediSafe account I would say go for the MediSafe account if I were you because MediSafe account voluntary contributions are not reserved that means if you voluntarily contribute to your MediSafe by 55 and if you want to perform CPF shielding strategy, all these funds are not reserved in your MediSafe, including the interest. Whereas if you were to top up to your special account via RSTU, all these funds are reserved, including all the interest, which is why I don't really recommend people to top up their special accounts first. And if you want to learn more about CPF and income tax relief strategies, then join us at over 12,000 members at the Honey Money SG Telegram group. But I know there are a lot of people who are really confused between the special account and the MediSafe account. Um, what is the difference? So I would say MediSafe account, there is much more usage you can do before 55. Like if you want to pay for your insurance premiums or even cash life supplements, all these you can utilize on MediSafe. And every time when there is a deduction, you could perform your voluntary contribution to your MediSafe account again and enjoy that tax relief, which is what I have been doing even though I've already reached a CPF full retirement sum in my special account. And I can still continue to earn that tax relief. So yes, the tip from me for CPF top up is to always go for the MediSafe account first, then go for the special account after you have reached the basic healthcare sum in your MediSafe account. So the next finest thing that you should consider doing is to top up your SRS Supplementary Retirement Scheme. And Supplementary Retirement Scheme or SRS is a tax deferred scheme. So for you to save on your taxes, especially if you are at the higher income tax bracket. So for those of you who have not reached the higher income tax bracket, I don't think there's point in contributing to your SRS because for your SRS, it's not like CPF where it earns you some interest you have to invest your SRS funds. What can you invest your SRS in? I would say you can buy your Singapore savings bonds or you can even buy the T-bills. All these are relatively low risk investment vehicles. But if you are slightly higher risk, you can use your SRS to invest in equities like the Singapore REITs and banks. But what if you are more of a fan of the US equities or global syndicate indices? Then you can also use your SRS to fund these investments via a digital platform like Endowers where they are offering their monthly prime funds where it's relatively low cost and can use your SRS. So I would say it really depends on your risk appetite but just don't let your SRS funds sit in the bank account doing nothing because it's just going to earn a very measly 0.05%. Now the third finance thing that you should do is maybe you should consider to start investing. And you see, investing is kind of like a long-term game. You want to invest for the long term. And if you do not know how to start, then I got a suggestion which is coming up. Every time someone asks me how I invest, I will always give the same answer, dollar cost average. So what is dollar cost average or DCA? To put it in simple terms, when stock price is high, you buy less units and when stock price is low, you buy more units. All the while maintaining your investment amount and frequency. And one of the best ways to dollar cost average is to use the WeBoost Regular Savings Plan feature or RSP. RSP is where you can dollar cost average your favorite US stocks, ETFs and mutual funds at your own pace. And currently, RSP supports US listed stocks, ETFs and SGD and USD mutual funds. To set up RSP, go to the markets, then RSP, then search your target stock, ETF or fund. For investment amount, you may start from a minimum of 10 Singapore dollars if funded from your bank account or minimum 5 US dollars from Weibo buying power. For frequency, you may choose from every trading day, week, two weeks or every month. Which also means now you don't have to go to your trading app and log in to check the stock prices every day because you know that your regular savings plan feature is already in place and will execute the trade automatically for you. If you are asking when and how is the buy-in settled, RSP buy-in will only occur on trading days and specifically for US trading, it will be from Monday to Friday at 10.30am Eastern Time. And settlement for US stocks and ETF trading will follow a T plus 2 settlement cycle. As you know, sometimes the market may fall quite badly during the trading days and you will feel very tempted to sell away your positions because of the negative emotions involved. With WeBoost RSP in place, 
you do not need to look at your trading app and avoid all these negative emotions together. But if you really want to stop or modify your RSP, here is how to do it. To modify RSP, go to accounts, then orders, then regular savings plan. Modify the amount or the frequency or cancel the RSP even if you do not want to continue with it anymore. To learn more about RSP, you can also go to Weibo's Learning Center, where it publishes articles like the right time to buy with a regular savings plan. The summary of this article is RSP offer busy investors a convenient and disciplined investment strategy and discourage an all-in or all-out approach. The market may be volatile but RSP will help to smooth out the impact of market volatility. So you will know why some people prefer to dollar cost average through RSP instead of timing the market. Before putting your money to investments, if you just want to build up a cash position, you may also do recurring cash deposits by the following steps. Click on accounts then transfers then recurring deposit by EDDA where you can deposit cash at a fixed interval from daily to monthly. What's more, if you are new to Weibo, before you even start investing, you can earn some good welcome rewards to kickstart your investment journey. You just have to fund any amount and maintain funds for 30 days and you'll receive 10 free shares worth from 30 US dollars to 5,000 US dollars. And there's even a money bull offer where you can get up to 3,000 US dollars of cash vouchers when you make a cumulative deposit from 2,000 US dollars onwards. Activate money bull and fulfill the requirements to get the cash rewards. So don't miss this offer and get your Weibo account using my referral link or scan the QR code right here before the year ends. Okay, the fourth finance thing that you should do before year end is to file for all your claims, your business expenses um, that you have incurred in 2023. And this is more from a corporate standpoint. But even for yourself as an individual, if you are self-employed, make sure that you have accounted for all your business expenses and whatever claims, even for yourself as a full-time employee. If you have company expenses paid by yourself on the behalf of the company, then you should file these claims and make sure all these claims are recorded before the year ends so that the company has it recorded on their balance sheet and P&L. Then from a business point of view, make sure that you have accrued all your revenue, all your business expenses because all these are for tax filing purposes. And you want to remain compliant, I think Singapore follows a accrual based accounting rather than the cash based accounting so make sure record all these transactions as of 31st december year end rather than the next year be tax compliant my final finance thing that you should do right now is to pay for anything that is gst at eight percent rather than pay it next year so that one percent gst additionally coming from 2024 20, onwards may impact some of you depending on how large is the amount and i'm very sure some of your vendors have started chasing for payment because they also do not want to be impacted by the change. 8% to 9% is not a significant jump. You see, 1% is not a lot. But the thing is that when GST is raised from 8% to 9%, a lot of vendors actually take the opportunity to increase their prices by 5 to 10%. And I'm sure you have heard and seen some of these vendors, right? Ridiculous. Why 1% increase in GST can increase 5 to 10% in the prices on? So life just works like that. If not now, then when? When is a good time to increase the prices? Probably the next time they're going to increase the prices is Chinese New Year period. And we all know that when they increase price during the Chinese New Year period, it's never going to go back down even though inflation is starting to slow down in Singapore. So yes, here are my top 5 finance and money tips for the year ends. Make sure you check which one is really applicable for you. Don't, not all is financial advice. You have to assess your own personal finance situation. And I'm right here in Milano, Italy, trying to gather my thoughts and reflections for the year end. And next year, what are my business goals? And if you really want to know what are the different tax relief strategies that I have employed for myself, then I recommend you to check this video out right here.